Greetings and God's peace be with you. My name is Christopher and I'm one of the priests at St. Francis Episcopal Parish Epiphany Community Center. I'm glad to have a little bit of time to talk with you this morning. As you can see, you might recognize the space that I'm standing in. It is uh, the entryway to the worship space here at St. Francis. Um, for some of you, you have passed through here many, many times. For others of you, uh, you may have only been through here a couple of times. Uh, and there might even be some of you listening that have never been on our campus before. But I, uh, regardless of whether or not you've passed through the, the, these doors before, I hope that you know that you are welcome here. Even in these uh, pandemic times, figuring out what it means to be a place of welcome, figuring out how to connect with people, um, to, uh, to be with them in the challenges they face, to celebrate with them in the ways that we can, and uh, to connect in deep ways that remind us that we are part of the body of Christ. In this particular space, um, at least during these winter uh, seasons, we've been gathering and standing right, actually, right here to have communion outside. Uh, the, the table is set here and then people uh, stand uh, or sit out in the parking lot or on the pad here uh, or gather in their cars and listen to the FM station. Um, but it's become a holy space in a way that I would have never predicted uh, when I came here 12 years ago. Um, it's changing the way that I see our campus and the way that we make use of uh, the gift that we've been given. As we gather uh, outside and in virtual spaces for worship, I think either of those deviations from the norm, the thing that we are used to in terms of being in our buildings, uh, you know, most congregations refer to the church as that, that place that you go to um, and not the people that make it up, the people that are the body of Christ. As I, uh, as I ponder what it means to receive the Eucharist, to become the body of Christ, to see Christ in one another, I, uh, I can't help but think about some of our neighbors. Many of the people that live among us here in the Baltimore County area are struggling, um, not just in these pandemic times. They, many of them were struggling economically before, um, but we, we have a lot of, of, of individuals and families that are facing homelessness. And a big part of the work that we do through the Epiphany Community Center is to help families in particular address this crisis that they're in and help them to recover, to to make sense of their life in a different way, to have someone believe in them and journey with them um, as, uh, as they, they take steps to change their life. And we do that through a wide range of different supports that you've likely heard about before, but even in the pandemic, we've been able to do that in really successful ways. And that's a good thing because there are so many more people that are facing these challenges, um, that are facing homelessness in this time. I don't say that to make you feel guilty or to, um, to, to upset you. I, I say it because it's a reality. I know uh, where, where I live, I'm seeing more and more uh, members of the Baltimore County community out on the street. And I've been trying to interact with them more and more. And um, there's a, a, a church building that I run past on a regular basis. And uh, you've probably heard me before talk about how I've stopped in there um, often just to check on the people that, that are sleeping on the porches. Uh, there are two or three porches on this building, and um, people had set up a, a, a little bit of an encampment there. And um, I'd stop in just to check on them and see what they needed. Something that I think not all of us feel comfortable or free to do, but you know, when your neighbor is in need, just checking on them and especially as the weather conditions are what they have been with three Sundays in a row feeling like not sure whether we should be gathering. Um, we've, we've gathered each time and done so safely but as I stand in the space where Eucharist was made today, communion was distributed, I can't help but think about um, our sisters and brothers, 
our siblings in Christ that are sleeping out of doors. Now, yesterday when I went past the space that I uh, have been too frequently, you know, I, I was thinking as I was as I was driving over there, um, I was thinking about how amazing it is that that church had left that space available to people, and I wonder what kind of process they went through. And I remember just thinking about it more, a little bit more than I usually do. And just as I pulled up, I realized something was really wrong. Um, the two uh, spaces where there were usually six different people sleeping, they were all boarded up and there was no access to that. And there was big signs that said no trespassing. Now, I don't know the backstory or what went into the decision to board all that off, but I do know that um, my heart broke um, thinking about uh, the people that I had met who had been sleeping there and doing their best to survive during these difficult times. I had been touched by the hospitality of that place and that people, and just in wondering and giving thanks to them, um, my heart was just really hurting to see uh, these big pieces of plywood up and those signs um, that were saying the opposite of welcome, no trespassing. As I think about the things that we do, the barriers that we put between ourselves and our neighbors, when I think about what we are called to as followers of Jesus to do and radical acts of love, um, I think we all have choices to make about how um, we're generous with what we have to give. At St. Francis uh, Parish Epiphany Community Center, there are so many ways that we're doing good work, and I can't wait to see us in the year ahead to take even greater strides to... Um, to address these matters of justice in our community, to help people, to help the unhoused find a home and to figure out how to support families that are in need. We have so much in terms of resources and we have incredible opportunities to do great things because God lo God's love calls us to do that and makes it possible. So as I stand in this place where Eucharist is made, as I remember that um, as I look to this camera, and I imagine you listening there, um, as I am reminded that we are all bearing the image and likeness of God, and um, we all carry that of Christ within us. We're called to see that, 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 that person of Jesus in the least of these, in all of our sisters, our, our neighbors, our friends, our family, uh, strangers, uh, even our enemies, called to love one and all. The assigned passage for today in John's Gospel begins with saying, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. It's a powerful passage, one that I've spent a lot of time reflecting because I love, um, I love planting things. And when I think about what it means to plant a seed and to watch it grow and the process of change that it goes through, um, the letting go process as new life springs forth from it. Looking out on frozen uh, icy tundra here, um, it's hard to imagine being able to plant seeds, but that time will come soon. I wonder what we will plant together as, um, as we do the work of God uh, in this place, as we do the work of God, as the people of God, the body of Christ. Thanks for listening. Um, until next time, Christ's peace be with you.